Hello, I'm Brother Feierstein. Today I will be giving a presentation on organizing your family history materials. These may be videos, sound, documents, or whatever you may have that can be uh, stored either physically or electronically. So let's get started. Today's presentation is on organizing your family history materials. Some of the information is related to file management on a computer. I won't be able to dwell very deeply into file management. If you need to learn about computer file management, I would suggest the Family History Guide. Locate their computer basics training and get a good basic understanding of computer file management. Does your family history materials look like this? Or maybe like this? Would you like it to look like this? Hopefully you can see that each item carries an alphanumeric name. What are family history materials? They can be documents, books, video clips, sound clips, pictures, they can be anything that helps tell the story of your life or the life of an ancestor. The basic unit of family history is the individual. These individuals are linked together into family units. My organizing system links family history materials to the person that it belongs to. If the item is associated with multiple individuals, the genealogical software takes care of that portion of the, of the organization. As you discover your ancestors, gather them, and connect them together as families, you will accumulate piles of supporting documents that uniquely identifies each person and establishes family relationships. There may also be video and sound items that you will acquire. Your storage system must allow you to find each document, book, video clip, sound clip, or picture that you have saved to a uniquely identify an individual or family relationship. The physical and digitized materials need to be organized so that they can easily be located where they are stored, whether it be on a computer or in a filing cabinet. Tossing them into a box or some other, some other container is not the preferred method. The system that I will show you is based on using your genealogical software as an index to the location of each and every piece of information that you store away. The heart of the system is your genealogical software. I am not familiar with all the different programs and what features they have. I believe that all the mainstream programs allow you to add media, notes, and sources to an individual's record. This may include text files, pictures, audio clips, and video clips. The media, notes, and sources will be those items that you want to link to one or more individuals. I use Roots Magic to store my family history information. It allows the adding of these items to individuals. With Roots Magic, you can transfer data to and from Family Search. Roots Magic can also transfer data to and from Ancestry. Your family history is valuable. Maintain a complete control of it by having it on your own computer in a mainstream genealogical software program. Make multiple backups of your data and store the backups in different locations. Starting is the most important. You have to pick up one of the items in your cardboard box and decide if it needs to be kept or discarded. It is the most important because it gets you started organizing. If it is to be kept, then it has to be put into your organizing system. It needs a name and a place to store it physically and electronically. Physical storage is the easiest. It will be stored in some sort of a storage device. That may be a binder, a storage box, or a filing cabinet. I started mine in a binder. As the binder filled up, I decided to move up to a filing cabinet. I didn't take all my items out of the binder. I just put the binder in the filing cabinet in its proper order. 
As you can see, the binder is the first item in the filing cabinet. It contains items document 00001 through document 00048. After you have decided where you are going to store the hard copy or, or physical items, you will need to decide where to store the digitized or electronic copy of the same item. When programs or applications are installed on a computer or other devices, the program sets up a de default location where that program stores its data. This is where we get into computer file management. This is a screenshot of Windows File Explorer. I have three hard drives in my computer. Roots Magic is installed on the E drive named Data. Let's zoom in on that so it is a little bit more readable. Hopefully that is better. Roots Magic base folder is called Roots Magic-7. Inside the base folder is another folder called Data. Roots Magic keeps its data in a folder called Data. That folder is highlighted and its contents are displayed in the window on the right side of the screen. The file name firesteinrl.rmgc is the file that Roots Magic stores all of my family history data. I have created other folders within the data folder. One of them I have named scanned. This is the folder that I place all the electronic copies of my items that I have scanned or digitized. In the folder named scanned are all the file names of my current items. As you can see, the computer keeps the files in alphanumeric order. When I add another file, I know what to name the file by looking at the last file name in the list and add one to the numeric portion of the name. The last name in the list is DOC00063. The next file I add will be DOC00064. This file list must contain every file name that you use. You may have an item that you cannot scan or digitize, such as a copyrighted book. You will still need a file that, with that name of the physical item to link that item to an ancestor or event. I just create a text file describing the item and give the file the name of the item. That way I always have a name in the list for every item I have even though I don't have an electronic version of the item. Item DOC00049 is a copyrighted booklet. I did not scan the entire booklet, but I must have a file in my scan folder that represents DOC00049. What I did was to scan the title page and save that file in the scan folder with the name of DOC00049. On the left is an actual scanned image that I have in my file list and has the file name of DOC00049. On the right is a picture of the title page of the booklet. I could have used either image in my file list. If you don't have a scanner, an image from a digital camera or cell phone can be used. How does it all work? Let's go through an example. Here is a certificate of blessing for my son. I just scanned it and saved it to my scan folder in my Roots Magic data folder with the name of DOC00064. I have placed the certificate in an archival quality sheet protector. I also printed two labels with the file name DOC00064. Remember, I stated that the next file name that I was going to use was DOC00064. One label is placed on the sheet protector and the other is used to make a hanging folder tab. I then place the hanging folder in my file cabinet in alphanumeric order. If I did nothing else, that certificate would get forgotten and lost forever. 
I need to link that certificate to the person in Roots Magic that it belongs to. In my Roots Magic, this is the personal data page for my son. I now want to link that certificate of blessing to him. This is in a large view of the left side of his personal page. There are six facts or events listed under the facts header. This is in a large view of the right side of his personal page. So for the highlighted fact on the left side, there are details about the fact or event on the right side. By clicking on the Add a Fact button in the upper left corner, we get this window. Here is the enlarged view. In the list of available facts is Blessing. We click on Blessing and then click on Select. That adds the Blessing fact to his personal page. We now see that Blessing has been added to the facts list. On the right side of the screen is the details for that fact. Here I have added the details of the Blessing fact. I also added a note to the details by clicking on the Notes button and typing in the note I wanted, which included the file name of the Certificate of Blessing. At this point, the certificate can be found in the file cabinet by just looking at the details for the Blessing fact. I'm using Roots Magic to be the index to the hard copy of the certificate located in my filing cabinet. Roots Magic also allows us to attach and view the electronic copy of the certificate without going to the filing cabinet. To the right side of the Blessing Fact is three small boxes. They are hard to see on this display. The first box is checked, indicates that there is a note associated with this fact. The center box, if checked, indicates that the source is associated with this fact. And finally, the third box indicates that there, there is one or more media files associated with this fact. To add the certificate as media, I just click in the media box and this window opens up. So now I would click on the Add New Media button. This will open a window that will allow me to import the media that I want. This is the window that opens. Here is a larger view of that window. At this point, I have a choice of adding the image from a disk or from a scanner. I have the file on the disk already, so I just click on the disk button. This opens the file explorer where I can select the location and file that I want to import. In this window, I navigate to the folder where my media is stored. Looking at the enlarged view of the file requester, we can see that the file I want is in the scanned folder. Then I just select the file and click on Open. The Media Property window opens and the certificate is shown in the main window. On the right side is where I can add information about the certificate. I have given it a name, short description, a date, and a reference number, which is the file name. I select OK and I am returned to the Media window. The certificate is shown in the large window. At the top of the window where the certificate is shown, the display shows that the certificate is associated with the blessing fact. In the lower right box, all the information about that file is listed, including where the file is located electronically. I know the location of the certificate in the filing cabinet by its file name. I click OK to return to the personal details page. Now there is a check mark in the media box and the note box. I now can look at any fact on the individual's personal detail page and see if there is a media item that is associated with that fact. I can view or listen to that media item by clicking on the media box. The file name in the notes or the media information in the media window will give me the file name so I can go to the physical storage binder, box, or filing cabinet and quickly locate the original. Let's review what we need to do to organize your family history materials. Set up your physical storage. Decide what you will use. Binders, a box, or filing cabinets. If you only have a single page documents, consider, consider binders. 
If you have lots of materials, including books in different media types, consider filing cabinets. Set up your physical storage. Obtain the materials that you will need. Binders, storage boxes, file cabinet, file folders, file folder tabs, sheet protectors, archival quality, optional items, label maker. Set up your electronic storage. Obtain the materials that you will need. Genealogical software, computer, optional items, scanner or digital camera. Establish one or more folders on your hard drive to store your electronic information. Suggested folders are documents, video, audio, or pictures. Start organizing. Pick one item. Decide if you need to keep that item. If you keep it, scan it or take a picture of it. Save the image to its electronic folder using the next alphanumeric name in your electronic folder. Place the hard copy in a sheet protector. Label it and the folder that you will physically keep it in with the same name that you gave the electronic version. File the hard copy in your storage unit, binder, box, filing cabinet. Link the item to the person or persons the item belongs to. This will be done differently depending on what genealogical software or system that you are using. Each system will have a way to add notes to an event or fact in a person's information. Just add the file name in those notes with a brief explanation of what the item is. Marriage certificate, birth certificate, death certificate. This is how my family history file drawer looked after adding over 120 items to events in Roots Magic. The drawer is full. The other three drawers that I have available are also full of household materials. I quickly realized that I needed to do something different. I looked at a binder that I had started my organizing with. It contained 48 documents and only took up an inch and a half of space. Some of the items can't be placed in binders, so I bypass those items and select those consecutive ones that could be placed in a folder. The results are shown in this picture. As you can see, it freed up a lot of space. From now on, I will try to group items that can be placed in binders together and place them in the binders instead of hanging folders. Again, this is just one method of organizing your family history materials. There are quite a few other methods of doing it. You need to pick the one that is best suited for you and how you work. I hope this has been a little bit of an eye-opener for you as far as organizing materials. They can become very cumbersome and take up a lot of space if you don't do it right.